I think this picture probably summarizes me the best. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm, I'm a winemaker, I'm a uh, full-time model, and a, a, a dog trainer. Um, none of those are true. I uh, have some investment in three companies. They all have a little bit to do with film, they all have a little bit to do, or well, a lot to do with technology, and they're all trying to look to the future. So, the title of my talk is digital thinking versus analog thinking. And you probably all think that your digital think is the fact you're here and half of your tweeting and you've got you've Google machines and your internet and all that. You know, you've got digital television coming. Well, I'm here to challenge that concept that you're a digital thinker by putting out the premise that our teaching hasn't caught up to our environment. And what I mean by this is that Think about the way that your parents were taught, and then think about the way their parents were taught, and, and the way we are taught to um, induce information and, and learn things. And it hasn't really changed for a while, but our world has changed a lot. So I think that we need to start thinking in a way that is relevant to our digital age. Now, these are some things that I would like to share with you. It's not to tell you this is how you need to think digitally. It's not that at all. It's just how I think and it has enabled me to create some companies that are doing some cool things in the digital space and in a modern space. So I'm just going to sort of walk through them and, and you can take what you want from them. First one is trust your gut. Now, there's a little story with this. I was, I was really lucky when I first started um, one of my companies. I had a bit of downtime, uh, as most startups. Well, probably startups shouldn't have downtime. Anyway, I did. And um, I did a bit of work on The Hobbit. And my job was to look after international crew. And I, I got the cool assignment of looking after a guy called Jim Jannard. Now, Jim Jannard, um, some of you may know who he is. He started Oakley Sunglasses with $300, uh, sold it many years later, later for two and a half billion, then started a camera company which Peter Jackson used as cameras, that's why he was there. He's now with like three and a half billion. So I got to look after this guy for a week which was like you can't pay for that opportunity. And he sort of cottoned on to the fact I was this young go-getter type chap, probably talk too much, so he decided to do the talking for the week. So he gave me all this awesome advice but the one piece of advice that really stuck out to me was no matter what you do, do it with 100% confidence and do not take on the false perceptions of those around you. And what he meant by this was that even the closest people, your, your, your loved ones and your friends, they will naturally, instinctively have a negative perception of what you can achieve. And that sounds horrible and it sounds negative but it's kind of true and so if you can learn to block that out and just 100% believe in what you do, then you can't help but succeed. So that's a good one. Never get comfortable. Now this is pretty basic really, just comfort to me is boring. I don't see the point in, in, in just doing day-to-day -day mundane stuff and that's probably why most of you guys are here today because you don't like that either. So if you can learn to find comfort in the uncomfortable then I think you'll start doing some really cool stuff and you probably are doing some really cool stuff. Utilize everything. Now this comes down to, for me, technology, but what, it can probably apply to whatever's happening in your industry because there's always stuff happening. Um, for me, it was the introduction of a camera called the Canon 5D Mark II, and I'm a filmmaker. I, I make online videos, and so for years and years, going, this sort of has a lot to do with digital thinking versus analog thinking. For years and years, production process was very big. You know, you had big crews of 10 people. Um, there was a lot going on. It was big budget stuff. What happened was this camera came in called the 5D Mark II, and it was a digital SLR, which is like a photo camera, but it had HD video recording on it. So you had these amazing lenses, this mind blowing sensor with video and so all of a sudden people could capture really awesome content that looked amazing at an affordable price because it was these digital SLRs. So I saw that, I jumped on it, a lot of people jumped on that bandwagon and they've done really well out of it and the whole industry because of that has completely turned on its head and now all the camera companies are trying to make their cameras in that sort of model and stuff and, and, and it's, a, it's a really cool thing. Um, embrace change and adapt. Now. This, I think, is, for me, I, I always start to get excited when I think about this because I always think, what was industry and what was the world like 30 years ago? What jobs existed and where's it going to go in 30 years? Like, my dad 
is a qualified photo lithographer. Who the hell knows what a photo lithographer is? I certainly don't. But that was his trade. That was like, you know, they, they were like, get a trade, it will, you know, you'll be secure. He got a trade that doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, what are we doing now that's not going to exist in 30 years? So we've always got to be willing to change and willing to adapt or else we're just going to get left behind. Sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's an artist now, he can do what he wants. Um, <laughs> try everything but know your strengths. Now, there's a saying, jack of all trades, master of none. A lot of you may agree with that. I personally don't because I think that in today's day there is so much opportunity to learn and grow and utilize what we have around us that you can actually be a jack of all trades. And that's, again, helped me in my company. You know, Instead of having um, a camera operator and then an editor and then a lighting guy, you've got this awesome technology where I can rock up and I can actually even hold everything, which is is amazing in itself um, and I can film something and then I can get out my MacBook Pro and I can edit it and the lighting technology is really small and amazing now so I can light it too and so you've got three jobs that's come into one um, and you need to know your strength so I know that I make things look really awesome um, I think visually but I also know that I have the ability to do other things so try everything but but you always have to have that fundamental I think that's important don't stress. I, this is just like, I don't see how stress can ever add anything. And there's this funny um, sort of perception in my industry, the creative industry, that if you're not stressing out, then you're not working hard enough and you're not doing a good job. And it's like, you kind of, you bring stress so it looks like you're doing more, but in actual fact, it's putting you backwards. So if you can learn to de-stress yourself, then I think you'll... you'll uh, 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 do a lot, yeah. Enjoy it or move on, it's pretty straightforward. Um, life is to be enjoyed and if you're not enjoying it then what's the point really? <laughs> Sycamore, that's one of my companies. Um, we do aerial imagery using unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as UAVs. So what we've got here is a UAV, it's 1.4 metres wide, it has eight rotors, it's battery powered, it has a gyro stabilised gimbal on the bottom of it, it has two operators, one operator flies a UAV itself and the other operates the camera, that's normally me, it's a lot of fun. And what we do is we capture awesome imagery from the sky and I made this horrible little illustration to illustrate it. Imagine what a camera jib can do. You could probably get to about 20 or 30 feet. Um, camera jibs are used to make awesome sweeping shots and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it's a big job to set them up. Um, budget wise, it could take a whole day if you wanted to a big one and, and it's a lot of work. Imagine you've got a helicopter. Everyone knows aerial shots are awesome. There's, you know, pff, there's no doubt about that. Um, but once you start getting low, you start to get a few issues, you know, you're, you're blowing your set away, uh, there's a lot of noise, it's, it's, it's not pretty. So there's a whole space in between that sycamore fills. So we can go from one foot to 400 feet and we can do what the jib would do or what the helicopter could do and that is a very exciting place to be because it hasn't been explored yet. So as a creative person, we can go nuts. And so for me, I think about the future of this. Like, if we're making films in the future, do we need tripods? Do we need dollies? Do we need camera cranes? Do we just have a whole bunch of UAVs that we're all controlling off our iPads? Or in the future it might be mind power? I don't know. But anyway, um, you know, and and is this going to change the way that we produce things? And so um, it's an exciting space to be in. And I've got a little video to show you what we do. Um, here it is.
All right, you get the point. Um, <laughs> We are continually trying to do cooler stuff and, and, you know, obviously take it to the next limit. And we're actually finding ourselves, we are struggling to find work on the basis that it's just such new technology and it's so unknown that people are just not aware of it. And, and it's a cool place to be where we really are on the forefront of something and doing something genuinely innovative, which is cool. So. STEM. Now, how have I applied my thinking to STEM? Well, STEM is a video production company that effectively makes videos for the internet. It's nothing fancy, but I think the road that I took to get there was a little bit different than probably most people who um, run a production company. And what happened was a, a friend of mine in high school came to me and he said, hey man, it was like study period for the end of year, seventh form exams. He said, hey, do you want to study but do you want to make rap videos? And I was like, well, there's only one option, isn't there? It's rap videos. And so I'll show you what we made. It's not a rap video. It's more of an R&B sort of hit. Um, it's not pretty. <laughs> So that's my past. Um, I was lucky enough, because I was making stuff, because we had things at our disposal, we were learning stuff on the fly. Um, the internet, you know, that was back in when YouTube had only just sort of started. We are using that, having some fun. A company called Rubber Monkey, who is a cool company here in Wellington, uh, spotted us and said, hey, do you guys want a hand? Do you want to up the production value a little bit? And we are like, well, yeah, of course. So they hooked us up with some guys who knew what we were doing, and we, um, we got a little bit better. So, I'm not, I, I don't make rap videos or ballet things anymore. Um, but what, the reason I showed you that is to talk about the way that we're learning and the way that we're engaging with, with media is a lot different now and you don't have to go to film school to run a production company. You can learn from the internet, you can learn from those around us and the whole model is changing. And so that's, that's sort of what I'm trying to encourage is thinking about how things are changing and it's a whole bunch of things. You know, It's the fact that we've got digital SLRs that I can film with, we've got um, YouTube that when you know when I started it was and you know YouTube started in 2005 now it has a daily viewing of over four billion videos per day like the way that communication is changing needs to be reflected by the way that the the companies are changing as well so it's it's thinking differently in terms of um, the business model and and just generally the way that we're producing stuff so then comes on to the third company, Rad Rhythm. Now Rad Rhythm is a new company um, I'm starting with a guy called Johnny Wilson and he runs a music academy called Good Time Music Academy. And um, what we're aiming to do with Rad Rhythm is to introduce dynamic and engaging music lessons to schools through video. And this has been done before. I mean, um, Core Education do this and, and it's great. But what we're trying to do is introduce it with um, things like the fact that they've just announced all schools are going to have broadband internet. So if we want to keep learning up to date, then we can utilize the internet and use video to, as, as soon as we have new information and as soon as we have new ways of doing things, we can simply make a video, put it on the internet, and that goes out to all the schools. And so all the information is relevant, it's new, and it's engaging. And they can access it at home, they can access it. A big part of it is actually using the internet. I mean, kids. Um, want to be on the internet and they want to use a computer, so if we can give them an avenue to learn through that, then, then that's a great sort of resource. 
So the main thing that I'm trying to stress here is to think differently, and it's not to, to completely change um, everything. It's, it's nothing new. It's just to think, okay, what are my surroundings, and how can I adapt to, um, to utilize them and to find opportunities in my environment? So we need to think relevant to our digital age, and, and there's so many opportunities out there. And um, I mean, if you're yeah, if you're looking for them, then then the internet's a good place to start. So embrace technology in the future. It's pretty basic. Um, I know it kind of goes against your talk um, about getting outside and stuff, but I think you know there's there's a balance. And while I'm going on about all this technology and stuff, the number one priority of all my companies as people and I care about people first but um, but it's cool to take people on this ride as well and to um, to experience it with them so go nuts do stuff and have fun and I think um, as f especially for creatives just create do not stop creating and it's like the whole rap videos thing you know it's like I didn't I didn't go to study for my exams and I, funnily enough, actually failed high school because of that. It turns out my friend was really smart and he didn't have to study. So he passed and I failed. Um, but you know, screw him, I got three companies. Um, so yeah, go nuts, do stuff and have fun and if you're not having fun then, then in my mind move on because in New Zealand and um, we're so privileged to have so many opportunities at, um, at our fingertips and, and if you're not having fun and then you should try something else and you probably will. Don't watch TV. It's just I just I just think it's a big time waster. That's just a personal thing. Um, and then the key through it all it goes back to what Jim Gennard um, told me is do everything with confidence because if you do, you can't help but succeed. And I mean, you you probably will fail at times, but you will have the confidence to get back up and try again and do better next time. Um, so yeah. I think that, yep, that is me. Thank you very much. <laughs>